Hi, we're, we're the Psychic, Psychic Twins. Twins. I'm Terry. And I'm Linda. Most of you are familiar by now with Lil Michaela. Lil Michaela is a digital simulation character on Instagram and YouTube. And the girl that apparently creates it spoke to Shane not long ago and she said her name was Michaela Sousa and she's from Downey, California. It creates a conversation among YouTubers, especially and Instagram people, about what's real and what's fake. And we got talking about it. We had this really interesting conversation. What really is real and what is fake online these days? Because everything is like photoshopped and yeah. filters and social on social media now and everybody uses them. Huffington Post actually says that Lil Michaela is the new it girl on Instagram. Yeah, obviously a very that. talented artist behind yeah. her and maybe or two two artists. Lil Michaela is kind of like conceptual art. She fits in with social media celebrity, the idea of what is real, like the Kardashians, what is real about them, what is fake. It's They present this airbrushed, photoshopped world that is so sort of magical and fascinating and you're intrigued and drawn in because you don't really know who it is. And it's quite interesting. I think it fits right in with the conversation about, you know, perfectionism and how women are marketed to appear flawless and airbrushed and photoshopped and with filters and things that only social media can do and it's only been happening I think for the past 10 or 15 years that they have these tools. What's well, like an avatar in a sense? Yeah, it is like an avatar. Um, we think there are at least two people behind Lil Michaela's character or persona. Very talented uh, girl and guy probably. There might even be three. And and she does have thousands of followers on Instagram and YouTube. Yeah, hundreds and, of thousands. Yeah, you know, and she's yeah. even recorded some music, which yeah. isn't too bad. It's a little bit uh, auto tune. Heavy, heavy on auto tune, but again, that's in keeping with the persona that they've created. She's used her social media platform to support certain socially minded causes like transgender rights and Muslim and refugee advocacy organizations, that's and good. even the Dakota access pipeline which was very controversial in recent years uh, so they're using a voice I say they because I think it's a uh, two or three people they're using this as a platform to support the left obviously uh, politically left um, viewpoints it's very well done and yeah, it is. a lot of people copy her makeup and start to wear her clothes and well, she's cute she's cute and she does have an androgynous look uh, some speculate that she could be a trans person in the process of transitioning. We are both a little uncertain about that. Well, advertising in general can present the idea of like the ideal woman or the ideal person. Very much so. And that can have a detrimental effect on mostly women, I would say, because for decades, you know, the world of advertising has promoted this perfect person or perfect woman that you have to be a Barbie doll. You have to, you know, have the perfect body type or hair, makeup, skin, everything has has to be absolutely perfect. That women are flawed in some way and need to be fixed or perfected and you're not good enough ever, no matter what you do. And that is more of a, a message that Madison Avenue and the marketers uh, you know, sold to women through magazines and television and film for since I guess the 30s or 40s, mostly the 40s and 50s, I think it started to get really intense. But, but then the supermodels came around yeah. probably the 60s yeah. and so they even yeah. made it more, you know, the Photoshop supermodels. Cindy Crawford, sure. Linda Evangelista, people like that, Claudia Schiffer. And I think women in particular get judged all the time, you know, for mm -hmm. not being perfect, you know. Everybody has flaws. Oh, yeah. You're perfect the way you are, yeah. you know. There's nothing wrong with a little makeup and fashion and hair and everything like that. But you know, it makes us feel as people, as women, that we're not good enough, we're not pretty enough, we're not thin enough, you know. You're not enough. You period. have to be perfect. And yeah. I really have a problem with that. But that's, so I think, I. why the Lil Michaela characters are catching on so much. Became so virally popular, yeah. with wild popularity. And it was actually at a perfect time when I remember a, a girl got about a hundred plastic surgeries to look like a human Barbie doll. Barbie. Do you remember her? 
her. Yes. And she actually did look quite a bit like a Barbie after all those surgeries, you know, with her entire body. I think she even had ribs removed. And the sad part is though, she is mentally and emotionally like a Barbie doll too. <laughs> there was no there there. There was no substance. It helps to be empty and vapid. I, you know, <laughs> I mean, maybe she got endorsement deals. Maybe she got some modeling jobs. That's great. But it also uh, kind of focused, sort of laser focused people's thoughts on, gee, why do women need to spend millions of dollars on surgery? You know, just accept yourself the way you are. We don't, we don't have plastic surgery. We never did. People Not that we don't say, believe in it. People but. say that we <laughs> have had plastic surgery. Oh. We had skin cancer, but we never had facelifts or no. plastic surgery of any kind. Or injections or wrestling or collagen. I, or, I'm terrified no. of anything like plastic surgery. I am abs sensitive. absolutely terrified of it and I don't <laughs> want it. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's really, it's fine if people want to do that. We have no problem with that, but I'd rather, we never did. <laughs> I'd rather create a Sims character, you know? I'd rather be a CGI character than <laughs> to do plastic surgery. Exactly. But anyway, the well, message really yeah. is that women are flawed and that we have to fix these flaws mm -hmm. and we have to spend billions of dollars on makeup and cosmetic surgery yes. and plastic surgery Big business. to be plastic people yeah. and you end up just looking weird. <laughs> you can't move your face, you can't make expressions. You can't you know? show emotion. <laughs> Try showing surprise if you have Botox. You can't look surprised. <laughs> oh yeah, good um, luck with that. It's a safe way, I think, too. It opens the conversation of, does Lil Michaela do this because it's a safe way to buffer herself against judgment or criticism, rejection, because people can be very cruel, especially on YouTube and Instagram. People can be extremely mean. And I think that it could be that she's trying to buffer herself she, so she can present her music in a way that absolutely doesn't leave her vulnerable to any criticism because why not? I mean, you know, people are talking about you, people are obsessed with you, but they're not really obsessed with you or talking about you because it's not you. It's, not it's you. a digital virtual version of you. So it's not you. And so it opens that conversation of why do people feel the need to be virtual people mm -hmm. online? Yeah, I mean, you don't really need to fix yourself. That's what, you know, the big industries and the magazines and the fashion companies and the makeup companies want you to think that you are flawed and that you need fixing. Oh, yeah. And it ain't true. Don't believe it. Yeah. And you're not going to hear beautiful. that message from a lot of people. But maybe Lil Michaela, the person behind her, maybe was bullied as a child and is afraid to present herself for fear of this kind of criticism. Now, we were bullied yeah. a lot, you know, decades and decades of bullying, mostly for being psychic. But yeah, that, that goes <laughs> you know, a long but, way for the bullies. I mean, even as kids, we were bullied. So I get, you know, the whole thing Just of feeling like, twins. like yeah. feeling like you're not good enough. And, you know, or so maybe weird. she was bullied as a kid. I, it knows. could be. I mean, who knows? Maybe none of these things are true. But we think it's interesting because it's sort of a commentary. It opens up a dialogue and a commentary, a broader commentary on how dehumanized women are. But if just as an aside, if you have somebody in your life Life that's bullying you or telling you you're not good enough or that you can't change or that you have to change or that you can't be who you are you need to really distance yourself and disconnect from that person and I mean Absolutely. right away it's about setting healthy boundaries for yourself you don't need to be a plastic fake version of yourself mm -hmm. you're good enough as it is Absolutely. Uh, it's almost like you know a little Michaela character it's almost like writing a book under a pen name or a nom de plume like a fake that's names true. so that when the book is criticized or judged then it's not you who is being judged yeah. but it's That's actually true. the fake name you know yeah. that you're writing it under yeah so you're not so really safer from criticism. you're not really taking a risk yeah. are you because you're always going to be somebody else and not yourself and, and we and talk so, about like how to spot yeah. a fake psychic how psychics fake psychics will yeah. use fake names yeah and uh, watch our video how to spot a fake yeah. psychic because that it's done all the time it you is. know people don't want to present themselves in a real way with a real name because they are afraid of being criticized or judged or wrong in now psychic with where psychics are concerned if they're wrong then they're abused people get hostile and so it makes sense that most psychics are afraid to come out and we came out of closet you know 30 years ago as psychics but you know 
most people have an effort because they use fake names online and on YouTube and Twitter. It's easier to present yourself as an avatar, as a Sims, a CGI creation. What is that really? What message does that send to girls uh, these days? I'm not sure if it's the best, but I think it's interesting. It's interesting and it's creative yeah. and it's, it's fun. True. We're not saying, you should, you know, little Michaela, you shouldn't do it. You're, you're brilliant. Oh no, yeah, it's well good. done. Very well done. And uh, but, uh, what do you guys think? You know? Well, we tend to be self-critical, uh, yeah. particularly as women, I think. We yeah, tend to be so. self-critical and we really need to give ourselves a break and to love ourselves we more see. and appreciate and accept who we are. Now, that could take a mm. lifetime. It can. But it's worth it, honestly, in this journey it's, of life. And uh, it'd be interesting to see what evolves and, and how many other CGI created characters or even Poppy is sort of a sim in a way. Yeah. She's sort of a digital. It's not like she is a real girl, but there's so much about Poppy. her that is uh, conceptual and um, you don't ever get a sense of who she really is. And that's very clever. And you kind of wonder what's behind this uh, pop culture sort of of synthesized version of a girl who sings and records and it's fascinating I think it can only get more extreme we're gonna see more and more of these little Michaela and Poppy type simulations online well we want to know who do you think is really behind Lil Michaela and her persona do you think it's Carly um, and Bev now Shane did a video where he sort of exposed her as being a girl named Carly and her male friend Bev they're known as uh, at Karsting on Instagram. It makes sense to us. You know, it, it certainly could. There are a lot of clues, similar yeah. homes and details yeah. in the videos that can be tied in yeah. with her in real life. We're not saying it definitely is Carly and Bev. But it makes sense. And she does look a little bit like her. It does make sense. They do have a very yeah. similar look. Very. They're both yeah. adorable. And yeah. so we want to know what you think. So write in the comments below what you think yeah. Lil Michaela is. Yeah. And what does it bring up for you, if anything? What thoughts? What feelings about being yourself and showing yourself online uh, what are your insecurities what are your fears so hit like and subscribe and we'll see you in the future